The Islamic State beheads another American journalist, actually an American Israeli journalist, he's a dual citizen, Stephen Sotloff. And a few weeks ago it was James Foley that got beheaded, allegedly, apparently, by ISIS or the Islamic State, whatever they wish to uh, call their organization. The point is they are killing a lot more people than just journalists over in Syria and Iraq. A lot of innocent men, women, and children from many beliefs, you know, different Muslim groups and Christian, Jewish, and several others have been murdered or displaced by the Islamic State. And Senator Rand Paul is calling for the destruction of ISIS from this Daily Caller article. Rand Paul is often labeled by his critics as an isolationist, but the Republican senator from Kentucky is now calling on President Obama to outline plans to use the military to, quote-unquote, destroy the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Quote-unquote, if I were president, I would call a joint session of Congress. I would lay out the reasoning of why ISIS is a threat to our national security and seek congressional authorization to destroy ISIS militarily. Over the weekend, Rand Paul the AP reported, told a crowd of conservative activists in Texas at a summit organized by Americans for Prosperity that, quote-unquote, if the president has no strategy, maybe it's time for a new president, quote-unquote. ISIS, or the Islamic State, as they call themselves, is killing opponents as they take land in Syria and Iraq and attempt to establish an Islamic caliphate. The Islamic State has also taken responsibility for, of course, beheading several journalists, and they are planning on continuing to do so. Now, I talked about this in a previous upload. I am not pro-war. I think that we made some mistakes by invading Iraq and Afghanistan. But at the same time, we have to accept responsibility for our mistakes and recognize that action equals reaction. To that end, I agree with Senator Rand Paul that ISIS, the Islamic State, ISIL, whatever the hell they wish to call themselves, has to be dealt with, but we cannot go it alone. We cannot do it ourselves. I'm not talking about just the United States. I'm talking about, you know, West, NATO, whatever you want to call us. I'm talking about a, a global effort, an alliance of nations that may normally not see eye to eye on things, banding together and bringing down the Islamic State. That's the only way to stop them. And specifically, you're going to have to have neighboring countries in the Middle East that usually aren't exactly friends put aside their differences to solve this problem. That's where it's going to have to start with what's left of the Iraqis, the Syrians, Iran, Saudi Arabia, even though some people say the Sauds are behind this, even though they're also kind of sort of going to be affected neg negatively down the road by this faction. I read another article where one of their long-term goals is to actually overthrow the House of Saud. And, of course, Wahhabism does descend from Saudi Arabia. And a lot of the Islamic extremists that are part of ISIS, ISIL, Islamic State, do believe in the Wahhabist teachings about basically wiping out anybody that does not agree with their definition of Islam and their specific beliefs should be dealt with. And not put in a prison camp or an internment camp or re-educated, you know, convert or die. That's basically their motto. And they just believe they're justified in what they're doing over there. The mass killings of soldiers in Syria and Iraq that surrendered without even putting up a fight were shot up, beheaded. And several other groups like I mentioned, not just other Muslims, but Christians, Jews, and other various beliefs you know, that make up you know, minorities in that region. And that's one of the big reasons why the Kurds are fighting so fiercely to defend what's theirs against the Islamic State instead of running because they realize that if they were to roll over, they would all be killed by the Islamic State. They understand that. They get that there's no surrender. And that's why they've been able to repel the Islamic State because they get it. I mean, they were treated pretty badly under Saddam. And Saddam was a bad guy. He was a dictator. He was brutal. But at the same time, I don't believe he was a threat to us that merited taking him out. Now, the Islamic State, on the other hand, is an idea. It is a belief that the entire world should bow to their specific ideology or we should all be exterminated.
They're kind of like the Daleks, if any of you are Doctor Who fans. They wish to exterminate everybody that's not like them. They don't care if you're a Muslim who happens to be a little different in your leanings. There is no room for differences when it comes to these extremists. They will kill everybody, Christian, atheist, other Muslims, Jews, and other belief groups. So, yeah, I do see them as a threat. And I think it's time that we do something about it. Now, we don't want to reinvade Iraq, obviously, or Syria. And like I mentioned, it has to be an alliance of nations. We have to do this together. If we don't, then they're going to continue killing more people. But unfortunately, I do know a lot of people here in the States and other Western countries have this mindset of, quote-unquote, just turning the Middle East into a parking lot or you know, bombing them all to smithereens, you know, killing the lot of them. And I don't know why people feel that way, because not all Muslims are bad. There's actually a lot of really good Muslims out there. And that's always been one of my core beliefs, that the majority of the people on this planet are good, wholesome. They just want to live their lives and be left to hell alone. And that's the way the majority of Muslims are. Unfortunately, you have bad apples in every batch and the bad apples here are really asserting themselves and slaughtering a lot of people. I mean who knows how many Syrians and Iraqis have been murdered over the past few you know, years in the past few months alone by ISIS, ISIL, Islamic State in order to create their caliphate. And I hope that this is something that the uh, nations in the Middle East will realize has to be dealt with and as soon as possible. And I hope that they lead the charge because they're the ones in the end that live there. We don't live in the Middle East. And our involvement in this task should be limited. We shouldn't be on the ground there. If you know we're involved in, say, strategic airstrikes, that's one thing. Because that doesn't technically put our men and women in uniform on the ground. And it helps them because they don't have the same uh, abilities militarily that we do but I'm not a general and honestly I don't know what the right solution is but I do believe that something has to be done at what capacity and what the uh, outcome of such action will be is anybody's guess while I do believe that mistakes have been made over the past half century alone in our efforts to play world police I think a lot more harm has been done than good even if there were good intentions involved and I would like nothing more than for all of us to be able to live in peace, to coexist, to believe whatever we want to believe, and, and no longer threaten or kill or attack each other. That would be nice. Maybe one day, somewhere down the road, a few centuries from now, we'll get to that point if we make it. But I am a realist. I understand that we don't live in that world. And there comes a time, every once in a while, that leave us with two choices. Either A, turn our backs and do nothing as the killing continues and the war crimes mount up and the Islamic State continues to grow or we start working on an alliance of nation scenario not just with the West but also with the Middle East you know form a strategy Mr. President and actually do something about it and I'm talking about bringing everybody to the table not our you know friends and not leave out the guys we don't like I'm talking about everybody that is against the Islamic State needs to come together. I'm talking about the West. I'm talking about Israel. I'm talking about Iran, Egypt, Syria, Qatar, the Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Turkey, Pakistan, the Kurds. Everybody needs to come together in order to deal with this common evil.